Hello and welcome all of you to this session of heat power engineering. In the previous lecture session, we have seen how the thermodynamic cycles can be conceptualized. What are the differences between the reversible and irreversible cycle? And what do we actually mean by a reversible process? And what are the reasons behind the irreversibilities which are always present within the system? So with this understanding, we had seen how the efficiency of a thermodynamic cycle can be calculated. And now we will be discussing such, such specific cycles where we will discuss the thermodynamic processes which are involved. And we will also understand, we will also try to understand what are the practical scenarios of these cycles. So remember, all these thermodynamic cycles are of reversible type and they do not uh, exist practically. Practically, they have a certain different implementation. That means if we apply them practically, they won't be uh, perfectly applied. There will be some kind of modifications which you will understand while uh, observing the practical processes. So this will be better understood when we will discuss the concepts of petrol engine or the auto cycle or the diesel engines now to start with to start with the air cycles we must know what is the base what is the ideal cycle of all these of all these applied cycles which gives us mechanical power okay so to start with we must know what a carnot cycle is so before starting the carnot cycle we must remember air is the working fluid over here now, in this ideal assumptions, we will find that the, all the cycles, that all the cycles will treat air as an ideal gas. Okay, you may, you may find that in some cases, like in case of petrol engines, air and fuel mixture is the working fluid there. But when we will discuss the concepts of auto cycle, you will find we will treat air as the only substance. Okay air as the only working fluid. So this is the basic difference between practical process and the real process. So that should be understood properly. So before all of these things we must know from where this from where all of the cycle concepts started. So it was the father of thermodynamics uh, uh, Sadi Carnot who invented or who discovered the concepts of the reversible engine and he proved that the reversible engine will always give you the maximum efficiency. So he himself designed the cycle, he himself designed an engine which we call as Carnot engine and it follows the cycle which is named after him the Carnot cycle. So this Carnot cycle we will discuss today and before that so let us check what are the objectives of this session. So first of all we will introspect the ideal processes that are involved in Carnot cycle. So you'll find that there are four specific thermodynamic processes happening in the Carnot cycle. So what are the natures, what are the nature of these thermodynamic processes? What are the heat, heat transfer characteristics? What are the work transfer characteristics? And what are the internal energy changes involved in this process? That should be understood very clearly. So we'll discuss those things later on. So let us uh, move on to the second objective where we will investigate, we will understand the thermodynamic process characteristics of an ideal Carnot engine. So as I was referring, so there will be four specific processes and we will study their characteristics. And then we will do the mathematic calculations, we will also find out the efficiency involved in the uh, Carnot cycle. So that is the objective of this session. So let us start our discussion on Carnot cycle. Let us see how the Carnot cycle or the Carnot engine can be designed so that we can get the maximum efficiency out of it or how the Carnot cycle is designed to give us the maximum efficiency. So before that you must remember any heat engine, any heat engine is not capable of giving you 100% efficiency. No heat engine will give you 100% efficiency. Still, Carnot cycle gives you the maximum efficiency, but it is always less than the 100% efficiency. Okay, 
So let us start our discussion on Carnot cycle. You must remember the processes which are involved in a Carnot cycle, and you can also see uh, that there is a certain thing going on. You can see the animation over here. That the first process is the reversible isothermal heat addition. Okay, so the first process is the reversible isothermal heat addition and then what happens reversible adiabatic uh, expansion so the first process is you must remember that all the processes in a Carnot cycle are reversible okay so I am not going to use that word reversible again and again I'll just uh, speak about the nature of the process so the first process is isothermal heat addition that means the heat is added isothermal that means the temperature remains constant okay and now you must remember that we have already discussed how heat transfer can be done reversibly keeping the temperature constant okay so I am not getting into that discussion and then we come on uh, come towards the discussions of expansion reversible adiabatic expansion and then what happens isothermal heat rejection and then uh, adiabatic compression so you can see these four separate processes over here okay now let us uh, just uh, show you so this is the uh, heat addition process so here heat is being added so here heat is being added and this is this is a reversible isothermal uh, heat addition so this is the reversible isotherm where heat addition takes place and then the working fluid or the system expands you can see that okay so work is done in this process so here work is done okay so we can obtain work okay and in this process which is exactly opposite to that here you can see work is being uh, consumed so for the reversible isothermal compression you know that work should be needed from external sources and then this is the process where heat is being rejected so this is the PV diagram and you can see also the TS diagram so here heat addition takes place so the process starts with reversible heat addition so the process starts with reversible heat addition then adiabatic compression where work is done then reversible heat rejection and then work is being consumed so if we are able to calculate the heat transfer and the work transfers involved in this process then we would be simply able to calculate the efficiency of a Carnot cycle okay so to uh, start our discussion to start our discussion to find the efficiency of Carnot cycle let us do a simple mathematics and we will uh, form a tabular for we will create a tabular form where we will uh, write down all the details about the thermodynamic process variables which are changing depending on the processes okay so let us see that how it can be done okay so as we have already mentioned so this is the heat addition process okay so this is the heat addition process this is the heat addition process over here so now if you consider that this is the process one to two where the reversible adiabatic compression takes place now for this process can you tell what will be the heat transfer you know that you must remember that for any adiabatic process the heat transfer is zero so you can simply write zero over here okay so for this process the heat transfer is zero because it is an adiabatic process and in an adiabatic process there is no heat transfer involved now how do you calculate the internal energy change how do you calculate it it is very simple 
here you can find that I have already already written down the formula. Now this is a general formula which can be applied to all of the process. Now here you can see the temperature changes from state point one to state point two. Now this is a constant temperature line which you can write as T A and this temperature, this constant temperature can be written as T B. Now T B is equal to T1 equal to T4. It is very simple to understand and it is T2 equal to T3. Okay. So the question is for the uh, process 1 to 2, what is the temperature change? This T1 minus T2, it is very simple to understand. So you can simply write Cp into T1 minus T2. Okay. Similarly, similarly for the process 2 to 3, what will be the uh, internal energy change? It will be T3, T3 minus T2. Okay. I am sorry that I have written T1 minus T2. Always remember the changes final, final minus initial. I am very sorry that I have done a mistake over here. So it will be T2 minus T1. And here it will be T3 minus T2. Okay. And here it will be CT. What is the initial? 3. And what is the uh, final state? It is 4. So CV T4. T4 minus T3. Okay. So it is T4 minus T3. And here it will be very simple. It will be T1 minus T4. Okay. Very simple to understand. Now, you know the first law of thermodynamics. It is TQ is equal to delta U plus T2. Now, for the first process, for the first process, process 1 to 2, here you can see it is an adiabatic process, so the heat transfer has become 0. Now, following the, following the first law of thermodynamics, you can easily write that the TW, TW would be minus of T. So, here you can write CG, CG, T1 minus T2. So, here you can see if you put the values of T1 and T2, T1 is always less than T2. So here you can see that the work that becomes negative. That means work is done by the system. I'm sorry, work is done by the surrounding on the system. Okay, so there is a negative work going on. Now let us come on to the process 2 to 3 where the heat addition takes place. Okay, so here the heat addition takes place. So how you can calculate the heat addition? Can you tell me? And uh, can you tell me what is the work done in this process? It is, it is very easy to understand. So this is an isothermal process. Okay, I am very sorry that I have written this thing over here. I am very sorry again. Okay. And the question is T3 is equal to T2. So this part would become 0. Okay, so the internal energy change is 0. Since it is an isothermal process. I think you are now getting my point. Since this is an isothermal process and T2 is equal to T2, it becomes zero. Now what is the heat transfer here? If it is an isothermal heat addition, then it will be very simple. You will just need to calculate the heat transfer or the work done. Which one will be easier to calculate? Can you say? I think it is always easier to calculate the work done over here. So let us remember or let us try to find out the process by which we had calculate, calculated the work done. So it is by this formula PDD. Okay. Now here for the isothermal heat addition we need to calculate the work done. So let us see how it can be done. So uh, regarding this formula so here it is uh, work done for the process 2 to 3 okay 
so here you can see the volume changes from V2 to V3 and here you can see this P now here is the working fluid here here behaves as an ideal gas so PV is equal to R pretty simple so V I'm sorry P can be written as RT RT by V now since when I am writing this thing we can write I'm not going into the uh, details so it will be RT RT now what will be RT RT2 okay RT2 or RT3 whatever you wish or better to write RTA into dv by v so integration of dv by v from state point v2 to state point v3 now the integration would give you r t2 ln of ln of v3 by v2 okay so this is the work done for the process 2 to 3 okay r t2 r t2 ln v3 by v2 okay now since the internal energy change here is zero then it is obvious if this becomes zero then dq is equal to dw so here the heat transfer would also remain same okay so the heat transfer would also remain same so it will be v3 by v2 v2 okay so this is pretty simple application of the first law of thermodynamics and now coming to the process 3 to 4 where you see that uh, what happens over here process 3 to 4 it is the reversible adiabatic expansion so it is an adiabatic process then the heat transfer would be zero okay so if this becomes zero then dw is equal to minus of du then it can be written as cv t3 minus t4 now you can easily understand from the state point 3 and 4 this is this is positive work done okay so work is generated here so work is generated here okay i'm sorry it will be 3 to 4 so work is generated here now again coming to the process 4 to 1 where isothermal heat rejection takes place so t1 is equal to t4 okay so since t1 is equal to t4 it would become zero the mistake which i had done earlier okay so it will be zero and again we can calculate the work done as we had done here so i will not repeat it instead i will just simply write down the uh, final formula okay so what are the limits over here what are the limits can you tell so it will be from v4 to v1 very simple thing so v4 to v1 so rt now what will be rt4 rt4 ln of v1 by v4 okay now can you tell me so obviously this v4 obviously this v4 is greater than v1 so this work done would be negative over here so when we are uh, so when we are dealing with the isothermal dealing with an isothermal heat rejection process the work done becomes negative so you can write r t4 r t4 ln of ln of v1 by v4 okay so r t4 v1 by v4 and you know that if this t u becomes zero then dq is dw very simple thing so again i can write again i can write r t4 ln of ln of v1 by v4 now here you can see that i have left a 
column and row over here now why it is becoming necessary now the first law of thermodynamics states that for any cyclic process the summation of delta u that means the changes of internal energy should be zero okay now how it can be proved so it is cv t2 minus t1 t2 minus t1 plus t4 minus t3 now i think now you have got my point you can see that t3 is equal to t2 so here i can write t2 that means this part becomes zero and t4 is equal to t1 so this becomes zero that means so the first law of thermodynamics is well validated over here now the other statement of first law is state that summation of all heat transfers should equal to the summation of all work transfer okay so this this thing and this thing becomes zero as we have seen earlier here over here so the thing which the data which we are left with is rt2 ln v3 by means v2 okay so it is v2 over here and this is rt4 ln v1 by v3 so you can easily understand that the summation of all heat transfers equals to the summation of all work transfers so thus the first law of thermodynamics is well validated for all the processes which are involved in a carnot cycle now the question is how we can calculate the efficiency so now our motive is to find the efficiency and this can be done from the tabular format which we have created just now it becomes very easy to calculate okay so let us see how it can be done okay so you must remember that the efficiency of carnot cycle or any cycle can be written as so this eta carnot is equal to 1 minus heat rejected heat rejected divided by heat added so 1 minus heat rejected by heat added okay now the question is what is the heat rejection here so for the process 2 to 3 heat is being added so this is the heat addition over here and and you can see that this is the heat rejection now you must understand since v1 since v1 is less than v4 this part would be obviously negative okay now when we write this heat rejection it means that it means that this this heat rejection is always uh, taken as positive okay when we when we are using this minus okay now here we would write what we uh, we write over here this is very simple to understand okay what will we write over here we will write r t4 ln v4 my uh, v4 divided by v1 okay v4 divided by v1 because we need to write the positive term okay so the modulus of the heat rotation should be written over here if, if we had used the positive sign or the plus sign then this could have been written like this okay so this is r t4 and here is r t2 so this is ln of v3 v3 divided by v2 very simple okay now the question is so it will become t4 t4 divided by into ln of ln of v4 by v1 divided by ln of v3 by v2 
now the question is how this term can be uh, eliminated so that the carnot cycle efficiency can be expressed in terms of the two specific temperatures now instead of writing uh, t4 okay here you must remember that we had written t4 is equal to t1 equal to t a this part had been written as t a and this is t2 equal to t3 is equal to t b so better to write in the t b and t a format t a describes the temperature of heat rejection t b describes the temperature of heat addition okay so this is very simple so here this t4 so it is t a and this this would be t b okay so that means 1 minus t a by t b and we are left with this terminology so i will just clear it up so that it becomes very easy to understand okay so here i will try it eta con okay now how can you prove that this ln b4 by b1 is exactly equal to ln b3 by b2 now this is very simple the question is for this process process 2 to 3 it is an adiabatic process okay so here v to the power gamma is constant okay so this v to the power gamma is constant for any adiabatic process and what is the working fluid here it is air and air is always assumed to be an ideal gas so p v is equal to r t okay now instead of writing p we can write rt rt by v into v to the power gamma as constant okay this is very simple okay so this is constant for any adiabatic process we can write this now it makes the equation change a little bit okay so it it helps the equation to be represented in the parameters of temperature and volume so temperature into volume to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to constant now what is gamma gamma is a ratio of specific heats it is cp by c for air and air is generally considered to be a considered to be a diatomic gas the value of gamma is taken as 1.4 okay so it is called as the adiabatic index and it is a ratio between the two specific heats okay now when we have obtained this equation t into p to the power gamma minus 1 is constant let us apply this equation for the process 2 to 3 what will happen t2 into v2 to the power gamma minus 1 will become One. Okay, very simple. Now, what we'll do? We'll just write T two by T three over here. Okay, and here I will just remove this term. I will. So we have already seen that T into V to the power gamma minus one is equal to constant for any adiabatic process. Now, the process which we had applied. This this fundamental relationship we had applied it for the process two to three. Now it is my mistake that I had applied for two to three because it is an isothermal process. So this is the reversible adiabatic compression, and this is the reversible adiabatic expansion. Okay, so the so better to write the Carnot efficiency. It was found to be. Uh, by tp right so this was t4 equal to t1 equal to t a t3 
3 d3 equal to t2 equal to td okay and there was some logarithmic terminologies right so it was ln v4 by v1 ln v4 by v1 divided by ln of ln of v3 by v2 okay so v3 by v2 now our objective is to express this relationship the efficiency of Carnot cycle in terms of the temperature of heat addition and the temperature of heat rejection so db db is the temperature of heat addition ta is the temperature of heat uh, rejection now we have already found out this temperature volume relationship and we can apply this equation for the process 1 to 2 and if we apply it we will find that t1 by t2 would be equal to v2 by c1 to the power gamma minus 1 it is very simple to understand i believe now and if we apply the same equation for process 3 to 4 which is a reversible adiabatic expansion it will be t3 by t4 equal to v4 by v1 to the power gamma minus 1 okay now the question is t1 is equal to so here I can simply replace it. I can simply replace it as T4 and T2 is equal to T3. Okay. So again I can replace it. So T4 by T3 becomes uh, it becomes T2 by T1. Okay. Now here if we write in the terms of uh, okay so here I can write that so it would be v4 by v3 and I missed it so v4 by v3 okay now here we can see that t4 by t3 is equal to v2 by v1 to the power gamma minus 1 and t3 by t4 is v4 by v3 so here I can write v3 by v4 is equal to v2 by v1 okay so v3 by v4 is equal to v2 by v1 okay now it becomes very simple that if you just rearrange this that means if you take it here and if you uh, so if you just do this rearrangement then v3 by v2 will be v4 by v1 so this Two would become equal that means this this two becomes equal and they can be eliminated okay so the efficiency of the Carnot cycle so the efficiency of the Carnot cycle can be found as 1 minus ta by db that means the temperature of heat rejection divided by the temperature of heat addition okay so please remember this relationship t into v to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to constant this is a very very important relationship which you would require uh, later on while do, doing the calculations on uh, auto diesel and Brayton cycles okay so another way is to find the relationship between uh, pressure and temperature that we will see later on or you can do it by yourself because you know that pv is equal to rt so instead of uh, putting p as rt, RT by v you can put v as rt by t and then you can find the relationship between p and t okay so this is the way out by which you can do the calculations so with this with this we can reach the end of this lecture and in the next session, we will start discussing about the auto cycles.
so this is the uh, primary discussion on the ideal cycle which which is the backbone of all thermal cycles and now you must understand that the discarnate cycle is not used practically okay the the pressure limits which we had described in uh, the weber power cycles while discussing about the weber power cycles is absolutely holding for this case also and this this special limits cannot be gained while uh, applying the carnot cycle through a gas pumps okay so with this we would like to end this lecture and in the next session we will start uh, discussing on the auto cycles so till then goodbye and thank you very much